Welcome to Plugged In, a special program produced by Con Edison about all things related to energy and how that affects more than 9 million people in New York City and Westchester County. I'm your host, Sydney Alvarez. We have another great show lined up for you. First up, do you know what it takes to make your home energy smart? We're going to show you the latest gadgets so you can save energy and get your geek on. Plus, summer is here. Are you ready for those high temperatures? Learn how to keep the green in your wallet and what we do as a system to provide reliable service. And what's underneath the streets of New York City to keep you safe? The answer will surprise you. And we're catching up to some Con Edison employees who help restore power to thousands of Puerto Ricans. Hey, what's with all the excitement? Check out how sea lions in an aquarium make STEM education fun. All that and much more. So let's get started. Have you ever thought about creating your own smart energy apartment? Think it's challenging? Well, it's actually easier than you may think. Let's find out how you can create this at home. Meet energy experts Caitlin Takata and Zach Sussman. They're taking this Union Square apartment in Manhattan and making it energy smart. Let's start with the temperature. A smart thermostat makes your apartment energy smart because it's Wi-Fi enabled and allows you to control your heating and your cooling directly from your smartphone. So one of the main benefits about smart thermostats is that it really tracks and syncs with your phone so it knows when you leave and when you come home and it can automatically adjust uh, the temperature based on your schedule. So Caitlin, as New Yorkers, we're always trying to save money. Tell us how this can help us uh, in that respect. Yeah, so smart thermostats are really great because it allows people to be more aware of how they're using energy and the temperature in their home. So in general, most people that use smart thermostats end up saving money because they're more aware of just how increasing or decreasing the temperature directly affects their energy bill. Another feature of a smart energy apartment is the lighting. Smart lighting is where you take a non-smart light bulb and you add some intelligence to it. A smart light bulb, like this one. Like this one, so this one actually can um, connect to your Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. um, so you don't need to have any hub or any other equipment. It can stand alone on its own. Uh, it can be controlled from your phone. It can be controlled around the city. Having a smart apartment also has to do with what's in your kitchen. Right now, the new Energy Star dishwashers have increased sensors and water filtration that just helps you use less water, therefore conserving energy. So right now, in the uh, residential program, we have a bunch of different rebates. And we have a rebate for room air conditioners. We also have uh, rebates for dishwashers, clothes washers, and dehumidifiers. And you can't have smart appliances without smart plugs. Smart plugs allow you to actually turn the plug on and off from your phone. So you're not leaving appliances on when you don't mean to, and you can keep turn them on when they're needed. Some smart plugs also have energy monitors, so you can actually see exactly how much power you're using. For those of you at home, if you want more information on energy efficient products, you can go to marketplace.coned.com. Now let's meet the couple who actually lives in that apartment and learn a little bit about their energy habits and how smart technology could potentially fit in. Meet New York couple Fernanda and Phil. They lived in their Manhattan apartment for three and a half years. Um, we have a nice space, walking to work, close to everything. Close to a lot of the major subways, it has a great view of Union Square. They're both conscious of the environment, knowing that their actions have an impact. However, they also have different energy habits. So who uses more energy in this relationship? <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> who uses more energy? I think I do. No? I think I prefer a little cooler in the summer, so maybe I would oh, make the Oh, yes. That's true. I think he does. They both love the idea of a smart energy apartment and using technology. It's just never something I thought to invest in. Um, I was also never sure how it would work in an apartment here in New York City. We're always making sure that when we leave, everything is off, like lights. Sometimes we forget a light on in the closet, so that's something that like, oh, did you turn the light off? Even the air conditioning, when we leave, we want to make sure that it's off or in a nice temperature for the house when no one is here. With a little help from Con Edison, they're learning about their energy usage, 
how to control and how to save. Um, having the information and the ability to control the right level, whether that's the right level for comfort, the right level for cost savings, the right level for environmental impact, um, having the ability to do that. He's more techy than me, uh, but same. I think it would, to make the convenience out of it, it would be great for us. Just having the, the option, right? Great couple, they were a lot of fun. Con Edison is at the beginning of a huge technologic revolution. We're installing smart meters. We started in Staten Island and Westchester, and now Brooklyn residents are next. Meet Eric Moore. This Brooklyn resident lives on the top floor of a fifth story walk up. My apartment is uh, about a 600 square foot, one bedroom um, in a co op in Brooklyn. Uh, it's got a small kitchen, living room, bedroom, bath. Eric says he tries to be aware about his energy use and not wasting electricity. Um, I would say I'm fairly moderate. I think I make some conscious good choices. You know, I, I leave uh, the lights off when I'm not in a room, but uh, I do like to watch TV and I have a large screen <laughs> um, and I do like to play on my computer and things like that. So, uh, you know, I'm probably somewhere in the middle. Today, his building is getting fitted for smart meters, a new energy initiative by Con Edison that gives New York customers like Eric better control over their energy use. It entails replacing all the meter, all the electrical meters in customers and commercial residences in, in all the boroughs in the Con Edison service territory. We started in Staten Island, we moved into Westchester, and now we're deploying in Brooklyn. The smart meter means no more estimated bills, easier integration to solar energy with the grid, and access to information you'll have the ability to see your energy use down to 15-minute increments to understand how much energy you're using and when. And it's important because it allows customers to access and view their usage during the day to see when they're using the most electricity and they can help themselves become more efficient. And as for Eric, smart meters mean smart energy use. I mean, I, I probably spend, you know, in the summer around like $180, uh, probably on the air conditioning. And so that sounds like a really cool thing that I could uh, use to maybe just make better decisions about how I'm using my AC in the summer. When we come back, we'll go above and below ground, a rare look at what's inside a manhole, including the dangers, and everything you need to know about overhead electric poles. Plus, we'll look back at Con Edison's humanitarian efforts in Puerto Rico, how hundreds of our workers helped restore electric power to the island. All that and much more. Stay tuned. Gas safety begins at home. Double check the gas is turned off. All the way off. If you smell gas, leave immediately and call 911 or 1-800-75-CONED. Hot out here. Cool in here. Now you can make your AC smart for free. Enroll and receive up to $25 in rebates. Just plug the smart AC kit into your AC, connect to Wi-Fi, and control your AC from anywhere. Already have a smart AC? Enroll and receive up to $95 in rebates. It's more than an AC. It's a smart AC that can help bring energy efficiency to your home and the whole city. Aquí viene la luz, here comes the light. That's what Con Edison and Orange and Rockland workers chanted at the National Puerto Rican Day Parade right here in New York City. And a few days earlier in San Diego, New York workers were also recognized for their assistance to Hurricane Maria. Here are those two stories back to back. I was part of the first wave uh, going into Puerto Rico, and um, I'm happy that we're in the parade today. Um, you know, kind of showing support to the people of Puerto Rico. Puerto Rican pride is something that is uh, indescribable, and it is something that will uh, live on in all of us forever. Governor Cuomo, you know, really made an effort to bring utilities over to Puerto Rico to make, you know, to restore, rebuild. Aquí, 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 aquí
Puerto Rican people were amazing to us, uh, very humble, excellent folks. Uh, we were very honored to be able to support them and to be here again with them here on their uh, National Puerto Rican Day Parade is just uh, astounding. And again, the warmth is just second to none. Being in Puerto Rico uh, was quite emotional, uh, not only just being there for uh, the people of Puerto Rico, but being away from my family uh, in New York. Uh, working uh, strenuous hours, but seeing how the folks out there needed us more than than anything, it was quite emotional just to assist in any way possible uh, with uh, the restoration efforts. And being here today at this uh, celebration, bringing back those uh, emotions. Thank you, Con Edison, for everything you did for Puerto Rico, putting lights up. Thank you, Puerto Rico, se levanta. Thank you to Con Edison. Aquí, aquí, aquí. We're in San Diego at Petco Park, uh, the home of the San Diego Padres, and uh, I'm here today to uh, throw out the ceremonial first pitch on behalf of the industry uh, to celebrate the effort uh, that we, we, we had as going down in the spirit of mutual assistance to help restore power down in Puerto Rico. The Puerto Rican people really needed us and everyone stepped up, took time away from their families to be able to go down there. Um, even myself, I was away from my family during the holidays, so that was tough on my wife and kids, but uh, it was well worth it. We have representatives from the line workers, from the support teams, from the IMTs, all going to be on the field with me, and which makes me very proud. It was great being able to help the people, uh, put in a lot of long, hard days, but it was all well worth it by the end of the day when someone was able to throw a fuse in, just to see the uh, expression on the people's faces. Hundreds of Con Edison personnel helped to restore power to thousands of Puerto Rico residents after the devastation of Hurricane Maria. Joining us are three of those workers, starting with Erica de Jesus, Val Bushiev, and Brittany Nelson. Hey ladies, thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Val, I'd like to start with you. You know, when we were down in Puerto Rico, I interviewed you, and something that really stood out was that you said, you know, energy is a basic need. How did this compel you to do your work down there? Sure. Uh, today we use electricity to help uh, to cook our food, to get hot running water, to for communication purposes. It really has impacts our basic need. And when we arrived to Puerto Rico, the lights were out, the streets were empty. And when we arrived and started restoring power, people started getting back to their basic needs. They started coming back to their jobs. They started going food shopping. They started going out to cafes. We started changing the city and starting getting back to life. I felt compelled to go to Puerto Rico to help people get back to the norm. All right. You know, Erica, that emotional connection that we were just referring to really hits home with you because you are from Puerto Rico, right? That's correct, Sydney. Yeah, I grew up in Puerto Rico and um, as soon as I heard about this devastation, I felt like I had to be there to be able to help. Uh, as Val mentioned, communication was a big part of it. Uh, there was weeks that we went without knowing where how our family was doing how my family was doing and friends so being able to represent the company in you know such a proud way to be able to help people with their basic needs and to be able to help my family and friends it meant the world to me right when they say that you know this hurricane you know, had a personal impact to the Con Edison family. You're a representative of this. You, you are actually, it impacted you. Correct, yes. Um, I mean, it impacted all of us as part of the, um, the family here in Con Ed also kept supporting us while we were um, down there in Puerto Rico, um, calling us, messaging us to make sure that we were taking care of ourselves and that safety was a priority to everything that we did. Um, because it wouldn't have been a success if we, if it, we weren't safe. Absolutely, thank you. Uh, Brittany, I want to talk to you a little bit about the resiliency of the people in Puerto Rico. You actually, you know, boots on the ground, got to talk to a lot of the residents. What was that like? So when we first got there, Con Edison, um, the people of Puerto Rico had already been out of power for two months. So I think that when we first got there, we really couldn't understand how people could deal with that for losing power for two months. But when we were down there, it was the holiday season, 
and we were there for Christmas, we were there through Three Kings Day as well, and just seeing how communities could get together was really, I think, a testament to the resiliency throughout the entire ordeal of Hurricane Maria. Right, and everyone helping one another, residents who maybe did have power because of a generator, were letting folks plug in. You saw that too. Exactly, yeah, we saw that. We saw the camaraderie that can develop between uh, you know, neighbors and community members getting behind one another and helping each other out. And that was really powerful, especially once Con Ed was in there and we were restoring. Seeing the videos and the celebrations that the communities and neighborhoods would have once they did get power, it was like that, you know, they had just won the lottery. And that was really <laughs> rewarding to be down there and to see that firsthand. Thank you all very much. And I know that on behalf of Con Edison, we all thank you as well. And um, thank you all, and uh, we'll be back. Each year, millions of consumers become victims of fraud and identity theft. Scammers use sophisticated techniques to trick consumers into providing sensitive information, often by impersonating a company official. This is called an imposter scam. An imposter scam usually comes in one of three forms, by phone, email, or third-party payments, with phone scams accounting for over 75% of all imposter scams. The structure is the same for most scams. A customer receives communication from an individual who falsely claims to be a company representative. This scammer warns that they'll disconnect the customer's service if the customer fails to make a payment, usually within a short time frame, via a reloadable debit card or other non-traceable form of payment, or by clicking in an email. Complicating matters, these scammers often employ authentic seeming phone numbers, official looking emails, web addresses, uniforms, and other materials. Remember, utilities will never ask or require you to purchase a prepaid debit card to avoid disconnection. Customers with delinquent accounts receive an advanced disconnection notification, usually with their monthly bill, never a single notification shortly before disconnection. If you're ever uncomfortable providing personal information by phone, hang up and call the number located on your monthly bill to speak to a representative. Never share your personal information, including birthday, social security number, or banking account information. For more information on how to spot scams, visit utiliesunited.org. During the summer, we may spend a lot of time outdoors doing yard work, building, and perhaps even a little digging. But before you put that shovel in the ground, there's a few safety precautions you should take. Right. The service for the house is too These guys aren't spray painting lawns, streets, and sidewalks to be artistic. They do it for public safety. Their job is to help mark nearly 4,300 miles of underground gas pipelines in New York City and Westchester County. Any type of excavation, if a shovel's going into the ground, if you're going to do any type of installation of trees, shrubbery, um, actual physical buildings, You see, any scratch or gouge can result in dangerous leaks. Primarily, uh, the first thing we're always going to be worried about is safety, obviously. We need to protect life and then property. Marking the areas will help you avoid these pipelines, protecting you and your neighbors. Last year, we received approximately 470,000 bark out requests. Energy companies like Con Edison will mark the location of their underground pipelines using either colored paint or small flags. So what we'll do is we'll drop yellow flags as it uh, concerns gas, and uh, the yellow flags will pinpoint exactly the area where the gas is leading to the home or business. And calling 811 is free, and way better than having to dial 911 because you now have an accident you could have prevented. In addition to the cost of the repair, the damaging party could also be responsible for hefty fines from regulators. If you don't make that phone call and you happen to come into contact with a, with a gas line or electric line, typically the first offense starts at about $2,500 and then any subsequent offense after that within a 12 rolling calendar month uh, can be at, uh, at a rate of $10,000 per, per damage. Next, let's take a look at what it takes to install an overhead electric pole. Our Alfonso Quiroz shadowed one of our crews and dives a little deeper on this important piece of equipment. This is a Con Edison truck arriving in the Bronx to install new overhead electrical poles. 
These poles hold in place overhead electrical lines and carry thousands of volts of electricity to millions of homes throughout New York City and Westchester County. Right now we have our crews, our company employees, installing brand new poles uh, for a public improvement job. The city is replacing sewers along this street and Con Edison needs to move its electrical equipment until the work is completed and then move it back into place. Each step in the process takes a small army of workers to complete. So usually setting a pole you would require four or five workers. So every worker here has a job, you know, comes down to the worker on the boom truck setting the pole, tractor trailer driver, uh, worker on the bucket truck rubbing up the primary, and of course someone giving instructions on where to set the pole, how to set it. So we lift the pole off the flatbed, get on its balance, rotate it towards the hole, get it off its balance, and then we can set the pole. Each one of these poles weighs about 2,000 pounds and stands about 45 feet in the air. Now putting one up takes time and patience, but during a violent storm, Mother Nature can take one down like that. What happens in a violent storm is a tree will come down, it will take down, uh, it could, will take down the wires, grab onto it. It might take multiple poles down with it. And before we start touching those wires at all, we have to make sure those wires are de-energized. Once we make sure it's de-energized, then we can start cutting them out of the way, moving them out of the way, and then we could start setting up what's needed and, and doing some damage assessment. And digging a hole might be a quick job or it could take a, a while depending on the hole itself. If we have a lot of rocks and big boulders, it takes time to break them up and, and get the hole down and we have to go to a minimum six and a half, seven feet depending on, this, on the height of the pole. Once you set the pole, you still got to put all the equipment. You got to frame it, the things are going to hold up the wires. You have to put that on the pole and then you have to put the wires up. And if there's equipment on that pole, again, you have to do the equipment and make sure everything's good. Before you energize any piece of equipment, you have to make sure the rest of the line is also good. So before you energize anything, you have to write out the whole line and make sure everything on that line is, is all, all right as well. So being out of power for a day, for an hour, if, if, let alone a week, it's not going to be easy. I, do, I live in the Bronx, right here in New York City, and when I'm beefing up the system, making it more reliable, restoring power, I'm not just doing it for strangers. I'm doing it for my friends, for my family, for my community. And I definitely want to get them back in lights as soon as possible, as safe as possible. We just learned more about utility poles. Now let's look at things underground. There's a vast and highly complex energy system right underneath the streets of New York City. Here's your inside look at the world of electrical manholes. New York City never sleeps. It's 24 hours of non-stop activity. And powering this urban wonder is also non-stop underground work through miles and miles of cables and thousands of manholes and electrical vaults. The way we did it out on the street is these Con Edison employees are in the middle of training, in a unique classroom with an above-ground walk-in manhole, simulating just about everything they might face in the streets. This is a structure that we designed to teach employees how to work inside our electrical enclosed spaces. This would simulate what you would see underneath the streets of New York City. The training simulator tests all your senses, from sight to sound, and also including mimicking a smoky manhole. Our idea behind that is the mentality of having them stop and always having a, a situation awareness around them. What is their surroundings and a questioning attitude that if something is going wrong, stop, make sure you're safe, make sure you exit the structure, and then you can look to see what deficiency that is. The training is essential for the employee's safety, but it's also about taking that classroom training and applying it to the streets. So we have 96,000 miles of underground cable in Manhattan supplying customers. We work very hard to maintain that cable and keep it reliable. Equally important is public safety. Manhole explosions can happen because salt residue from winter snow-treated roadways function as a conduit if it makes contact with the electrical cables. The training the workers receive go hand in hand with maintaining a reliable power system, including manhole explosion prevention technology, like infrared cameras that detect hot spots on cables, sensors that detect gas buildup, and a vented manhole cover replacement program. All technology to keep New Yorkers safe. Well, we take a lot of pride in our work, 
and we're always looking for new technology to, uh, to implement on our system and to organize it into programs that will keep the city safe. And in this 24-hour city, you definitely need 24-hour power. Con Edison is partnering with area museums to help students apply their classroom lessons to the real world. Let's take a look at how the Brooklyn Aquarium makes learning fun. We do a lot of learning in the classroom, but learning outside of the classroom adds a different level to the students. Maybe see perspectives or uh, expertise that their own teachers don't have. We have to expose them to as many STEM opportunities as possible. It's great for their futures. It's important for them to understand what's out there for them. Um, Hands-on activities with science is incredibly important for their futures, and it's something we really believe in here at the Aquarium. <laughs> I saw a uh, sea lion. I saw them perform. It was awesome. I think it also gives them a chance to see the wealth of scientific and cultural activities that are available in New York City, and hopefully they will take more advantage of those as they continue to grow in our city. Three D printers might be the new kid on the block in terms of tech gadgets. But one NYC student has got her eyes on the future and her mind on this new device. This is a 3D printer. And if you've ever wondered exactly what a 3D printer is or does, you're not alone. We went to two local experts. This is 14-year-old Victoria Robles, a student who attends an after-school program at the Grand Street Settlement on the Lower East Side, and her instructor, Gabriel Fulcar. So a 3D printer is a device that takes a material called filament. It basically heats it up, uh, the filament, that is, and puts it on a flat platform. And then it will lay one layer down, go back to its beginning, layer another one, and another, and so on and so forth, until basically whatever it is that you're creating seems to kind of spring up from the ground. But it's three-dimensional, so you can hold it, you can like bend it sometimes if the filament is flexible, and you can like make it three-dimensional, you can make it two-dimensional, it's like really, really cool. Con Edison is a funder for my program, The Clubhouse. A lot of what we do is, is funded and founded through them. There are careers that we haven't even heard or thought of yet that could be coming up in the next five years. The purpose really of the program is to get kids thinking about technology so that when these careers emerge, they won't be left in the digital dust. But having them understand that a 3D printer, it can print things, things that can even make our lives better. So it's like teaching girls how to do things that people think that is mostly a male thing can like really, really help to see, basically teach all children that no matter who you are, no matter what you are, you can do anything you want. That's all for this episode of Plugged In. Remember, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Our handle is at Con Edison. Thanks for watching, and until next time.